Welcome to Next War India Pakistan's Advanced Air Game. I hope to be able to explain at least part of it in this video, the at least the air superiority step and its ramifications for other things. Uh, by going through its mechanics and that of air combat, it, uh, and the advanced air game can seem a bit intimidating, but I think with the uh, with uh, appropriate explanation, it can be made fairly manageable. So at the start, you're you're going to see this uh, air air display with various. Um, you'll see this air display with various planes on it. Uh, various these each of these represents a squadron of aircraft of varying types. The um, there is some information displayed on the lower left hand corner about what uh, every value means. But if we zoom in on, say, this Pakistani F-16, uh, we can look at uh, roughly what every number means. So the uh, in the upper left-hand corner, the A indicates all weather capability, meaning that it's less affected by storm overcast weather than other aircraft. If there were an S there, it would indicate a stealth aircraft, which cannot be engaged in standoff or long-range combat and also um, has significant bonuses against air defense. Uh, on the upper right hand corner there are, might be an S, M, L, or U which indicates the air unit's range. Uh, on the right side next to the figure of the aircraft is a number that can be positive or negative and that in, that is the indicator of pilot skill which uh, negative is better, positive is worse. Um, this has is a die roll modifier to almost everything that the aircraft does, from strikes to air combat to ground support. On the bottom side, you will see the aircraft's combat values. The left side is its air-to-air -air combat value, which will affect its differential in air-to-air -air combat. One star next to that value indicates that uh, the aircraft has standoff capability. Two stars indicates long range capability. Uh, these add extra opportunities to engage in air combat uh, up to three. Uh, there are three rounds in air combat uh, long range, standoff, and dogfight. Every fighter can dogfight, but aircraft with stars can engage in the other types of combat. The middle number is its combat support value, so when the plane successfully does a combat support mission, it will add that number as a die roll modifier to the ground combat. On the right side is strike rating of the aircraft, which is its value in strikes, which will determine what column on the strike table that this, a strike from this aircraft will, uh, will be on. Uh, a star next to the strike rating indicates that it has standoff strike capability and is thusly immune to AAA fire. Uh, two stars and no number indicates that the aircraft can only be used to launch uh, cruise missiles. Okay, so after so now that we have a decent idea of what these uh, what these mean, we'll get into the steps of the uh, the air phase uh, before strikes. So first of all, you will count all of the um, the air bases for each side. Uh, start with um, that have been that have any strike marker or are destroyed, and in that case. Um, that player, the player who owns those air bases, will divide that by two, uh, rounding down and. Is it round down or up? Okay, yes, yeah, sorry. You you count the amount of air bases with strike markers 
and the owning player must move half that number of aircraft rounded down to a minimum of one to the flown box in the appropriate pacing box. So um, let me get back to what's on here. Each of these boxes is a basing box. Uh, you'll see uh, one for rough geographical regions. They have three spaces, a boarded, which you go to if you are boarded for any reason, Flown, which generally happens after a successful mission, or because of the uh, damage to airstrips, or um, or ready, which means that the aircraft is ready for use. Okay. The um, so once you've calculated the amount of air bases that are that have strike markers, the player owning the plane can choose that many planes to go to the flown instead of being available. Next, both players count the number of bases captured or destroyed in the previous turn, and then the opposing player chooses that many planes to go in the flown box. So the Pakistani player would, would, if they captured some air bases, would be able to put Indian aircraft in the flown box in the same way. Uh, each basing box, by the way, will show what the range means. The range is only really matters uh, based on what each basing box says. So, uh, for example, the India and Pakistani basing boxes say that short-range aircraft can only strike targets up to five hexes from the from the national border either way so with that in mind um, we'll just assume for the purpose of our little demonstration that all of the planes survived which is a very favorable situation in the border war scenario but let's um, let's start so the first thing after we've determined planes that are sent to the flown box before anything happens, we will look at the AWACS advantage, which rests with India currently, and it is one. The player with AWACS advantage gets to select which planes go out to air superiority last. So the Pakistanis would have to choose which pl which planes they want to send out. Now, the important thing to understand is that that air superiority is is um, only aircraft in air superiority can be sent on escorting or intercepting missions so you cannot hide in your air, air base and expect to be able to use your aircraft to deal with enemy strikes however the um, if you want to go on strikes yourself, you need to keep your plane in the ready box. You can only strike from the ready box or provide ground support from the ready box. So what you'll be doing is you'll assign, the Pakistanis will probably assign their best fighters, all their best fighters to the air superiority box. We'll assign the, uh, the, big the J7s as well, even though they suck, they don't do much else. And if a plane survives the air superiority step, it still counts. It doesn't have to abort unless it's required to by a combat result. Uh, we'll send the mirages out. They're not much use in uh, ground, ground support. And we'll send the J-10. We'll leave the F-16s in the ready box because their strike capability is just too useful. The, with the Indians now, I get to see what he's brought in, and first of all, I'll go ahead and grab my dedicated fighters, like my MiG-21s, and put those in the air superiority. Then I'll look, I think I want my SU-30s in there. Those have very good air-to-air air air ratings. Um, we'll bring our MiG-29s in. And I'll bring my Teases in. 
I'll keep the rest of the craft for uh, ground attack. So now, here's what's going to happen. After we've both allocated all of our aircraft to air superiority, the player with AWACS advantage is going to be the first one to choose matchups. Now, you're going to basically be choosing which fighters go 1v1. Now, what I want to do now with the AWACS advantage is you can do that many based on the number of AWACS advantage you have, which is one right now. But if I had AWACS advantage two, I could choose two matchups, and then the Pakistani player gets to pick one. So my goal here is so the AWACS advantage is very useful in this air superiority step. So uh, I am going to pick. See, I'm going to have my MiG-29 fight this uh, Shenyang F-7. Actually, I'm going to have it pick, up, pick on the Mirage. Uh, and then the Pakistani player gets to pick a matchup, which he is going to have his JF-17 pick on my MiG-21. And, okay, and then... Okay, and then the Indian player, and so on and so forth. The player with AWAX advantage picks however many matchups he has, and AWAX advantage, and then the player without picks one. So if you have AWAX advantage four, I'm going to pick four, and then you're going to pick one. So it, it's to your advantage to, um, to, to max these things out. So I'm going to have my uh, SU-30 fight that J, uh, that J-10. Uh, he's going to have his JF-17 fight the other MiG-21. Uh, I'm going to have my my other MiG-29 fight the... Uh, actually, I'm going to have my MiG-29 fight the F-7. He's going to have his Mirage fight my Tejas. And I'm going to have my Tejas fight the... I'm uh, going to have it fight the Trayon. Okay, now what I get to do here is now that all the planes are matched up one to one, uh, I still have a plane left. The Indian player still has a plane left. He has two options. He can just keep the plane out of there and it will stay after all the combats are done no matter what. Or I can choose to two on one an enemy fighter. You can only do a maximum of two on one. So only three fighters can be involved in a combat. So what I'm going to see is this JF-17 here, I'm going to send in my SU-30 to uh, to double up on this JF-17 and hopefully give me, give me a little bit better chance against it. So now we'll resolve the air combats in the order of... And it doesn't matter, so we'll just be um, doing it. So we'll choose, say, this JF-17 against the MiG-21 here. So the JF-17 has long-range capability, has actually standoff capability, not long-range. So it will get a round of standoff combat in which the MiG-21 will not be able to respond. Uh, one moment while I get the uh, air combat chart out. Okay, so the only the J11 will be rolling during this uh, standoff combat, and the differential is plus one, so we'll be on the plus one column uh, as standoff DRMs. There will be a plus one on this for the non-major country. And other than that, so uh, we'll be rolling on the plus one uh, table at, uh, with a plus one DRM. So we rolled a five on the plus one table with a plus one DRM. 
means uh, you have an advantage result. So advantage result means that um, that you will fire first in the next combat. Uh, it means that the advantaged plane will fire first in the next round of combat. So, and then we'll go to the dogfight uh, step, in which case the, of course, because the uh, JF-17 is advantaged, it will fire first. At this point, we uh, we will roll on the plus one with no DRM this time. That's a three. So that is a uh, damaged and a, a nope. That is an abort result. So this MiG-21 goes to the abort box, and that's it. So he survives and sends the MiG-21 away. All right, now we have a two-on-one situation. So the JF-17 has a choice here in which one he wants to inflict results on. So for this case, we will choose the SU-30. Um, now, they're, both planes have standoff capability, so they will both fire in standoff combat, and standoff combat is entirely um, simultaneous. So the differential is minus one for the JF-17 and plus one for the SU-30, so we'll roll for the JF-17 first. Uh, once again, a plus one DRM for a non-major country uh, standoff attack. So that's a three, which goes to a four on the minus one, which would be a advantage result. Uh, let's see what the big uh, the SU-30 rolls. The SU-30 is on the plus one column, which it rolls a two, which is raised to a three. Uh, and that will abort the JF-17. Uh, so the advantage makes no difference. So those two planes go to the, uh, they're done. They remain in the air superiority area to count later for air superiority and to count for um, be available for escort and interception. Uh, next combat is the Tejas versus the F-7. So the Tejas will fire in uh, on the zero column in standoff combat at plus one DRM. That's an eight that nothing happens. We go to dogfight combat now, and I believe in dogfight combat, uh, there is, oh shit, everybody's got to do the long range combat first, and then everybody does their dogfight, right? Okay. Well, whatever. We'll we'll count that. So nothing happened in that dog in that uh, st standoff step, and we'll do a standoff there. This is a standoff on the plus one table with uh, plus one DRM. Uh, that's going to be nothing. Um, this Mig twenty nine is going to do standoff combat against the Mirage uh, with the plus one DRM on a plus one table. That is a seven. On the plus one table, that is nothing. Okay. Um, this Tejas will fire at the Mirage at the zero with a plus one DRM. Okay, that is going to be a two on the zero, which will abort the Mirage. And then we have a simultaneous. Uh, so the J10 will fire at the, at the minus one column with a plus one DRM. That's nothing, and then the SU-30 will, will do the same, but at a plus one differential. That is a five. Uh, that is an advantaged result, so the J-10 will be disadvantaged. Okay.
Okay, now we will go to uh, uh, dogfights. In the dogfight phase, you uh, the higher combat rating fires first. So we will. So we have a dogfight here. That's good. This is going to be simultaneous. Actually, technically speaking, the MiG twenty nine will fire first. So we'll go through and, and uh, we'll do this correctly. So actually the SU-30 will fire first. Okay, this is a 5 on the plus 1. So that's going to be a advantage. And I believe what an advantage result does. I don't know if an advantage on an advantage actually. I will assume it is not. So advantaged is um, oh no, it's not advantage. You don't get advantage in dogfights. Sorry. So that's a uh, a damaged result. So that's going to uh, so that's going to reduce this plane, but he is going to, but he's still going to be there. And so will instead be the last to shoot. Okay. Uh, in this case, so the um, the MiG-29 with a minus one DRM for his pilot skill will shoot. I have been forgetting to take into account the pilot skill. So it'll be a plus a minus one DRM on the plus one table. That is a zero, which goes down to minus one, which uh, destroys a seven. So this should be. Which will be eliminated. That's uh, worth some victory points. And that wins. And then the MiG 29 here against the Mirage. Which will be a plus one straight up on the plus one table that's a three that's going to abort the mirage okay and then we will take the uh, simultaneous combat here so the the f7 will shoot at the tejas on the zero column that's a 9, that's nothing. The Tejas will shoot back at the F7. On the 0 column, a 3 is an abort. So now the, uh, the J10 will fire in, in air combat at the minus 3 table with a plus 1 DRM. So we'll roll for that. That's a 7, that's nothing. So but he lives. Okay, so after all the air combats are resolved, what will then happen is you'll count who's left. So there's one, two uh, Pakistani aircraft left, and there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven um, Indian aircraft left. So what we'll do is we'll go to the We'll go to the uh, air superiority area, and you'll see that it is three to one. Actually, it's more than three to one, so it's actually at air superiority. So, however, only air supremacy increases the AWACS advantage by more than one, but it will still increase the two, but for the Indians. 
Now, the effect of air superiority is that it makes uh, transporting more dangerous. It improves the capability of automatic detection from friendly air bases. Uh, and it makes air mobile movement more dangerous, too. Uh, and it also means that uh, all these planes will be available for interception or escorting uh, whatever strike packages we want to use. Uh, however, this is dependent on early detection, so there's no guarantee that a interceptor will be able to intercept any particular strike uh, against a particular target. So, and at the end of the turn, if they're still in the superiority box because they haven't been used either way, they'll go back to the ready box. And at the end of the turn, things from flown go straight to ready, and things from aborted have a chance to go to ready, but will most likely go to flown. And that's the uh, that's the gist of the fighter combat phase, air superiority phase of the advanced air game. In the next video, I'll discuss strikes and strike targets, um, and all the systems that go into that, uh, air defense and uh, other things. Thank you for watching, and uh, hands out.